today it's a very sunny day and I'm reading it in my treehouse. I've got sunglasses on as well. Today we're reading the story of Fussy Frankie. Frankie was fussy. A little boy refused to eat any fruit or vegetables whatsoever. If any found their way on to his dinner plate, he would get rid of them immediately. Brussels spout, sprouts would be flicked across the kitchen. Broccoli would be flung over his shoulder. Tomatoes would be splattered on the ceiling. All the teams would be thrown back at whoever had the misfortune of serving them up. Rhubarb was the boy's absolute worst nightmare. Like a lot of fussy eaters, he never actually tasted the food he ate the most. But to Frankie, it looked and smelled yuxum. Whoever he came to face to face with a piece of rhubarb, he took great pleasure in flushing it down the toilet. Goodbye, Ranky Danky Rhubarb. Good riddance. Ha ha, the boy would say as he watched it swirl down the pan. Every morning at breakfast time in the kitchen, Frankie's mum would plead him with him. You need to eat your pie a day, Frankie. The pie lived in a little house on the far side of town. Casting a shadow over the family home was a cute nuclear power station that glowed in the dark and hummed all day and night. Ma, I do get me five a day, snapped the boy. Crisps, biscuits, chocolate cake and biscuits. You counted biscuits twice. That's because I have two packets a day. Duh. Frankie's daily menu looked like this. Breakfast, a bowl of crisps and ice cream on top. Mid-morning snack, sweets sprinkled with sugar. Lunch, main course, a packet of double biscuits dipped in chocolate sauce. Pudding, a deep fried cake. Afternoon tea, a packet of double chocolate biscuits washed down with a glass of treacle. Dinner, main course, a chocolate egg on a bed of crisps. Pudding, a block of fudge smothered in fudge sauce. Bedtime snack, a bag of toffees to chew on. The boy's mum was sick with worry about her son. Because of his terrible diet, Frankie was becoming bigger, paler, paler and spottier by the day. So mum had decided to create a food revolution in her house. Her son was going to eat fresh fruit and vegetables at every meal, whether he liked it or not. I'm starving. What's for Brecky, Ma? If it's not chocolate, then I'm putting myself up for an adoption. It's better than chocolate. Just you wait and see. The lady then whisked out the plate she'd been hiding under a tea towel. Ta-da! She exclaimed excitedly. What's this, Mama? Frankie demanded. It's a grapefruit. A what fruit? A grapefruit. It's really delicious. Have a try. Frankie looked at the thing with contempt. He leaned his face down and took a sniff of it. Eh, it's punky pungy. It smells fresh. It smells disgustable. I ain't eating that, you cruel old hag witch. Give me some chocolate now. The lady was hurt by her son's outburst, but tried to say st stay strong. No, she replied. Frankie couldn't believe his ears. What do you mean, no? I want chocolate. No, Frankie, grapefruits are yummy. I promise you. They taste sweet, just like a sweet. Come on now, be a good boy. The lady tried to feed her son a segment with a spoon as if he was a baby. He struggled for a while, but mum preserved and eventually got a piece of fruit in her son's mouth. As soon as he had, he spat it back at her. Spat! Splat! It hit the boy's mum right on the nose. Ah! screamed Frankie. That tasted like pookie plops. As the poor lady peeled the piece of grapefruit from her nose, she realised she might have to try a different approach with, uh, with her son. Bribery. Look, Frankie, she began, if you eat the grapefruit, you can have one square of chocolate from this giant bar here. 
Mama always had a giant bar of chocolates on standby in case her son became angry. The boy was craving chocolates. He hadn't ha had any for a matter of hours. However, there was no way he was going to eat that yucky mucky f fruit thing gummy, whatever it was called. A wicked plan crossed his mind. All right, Ma, you are right. I should have me five a day. I'll eat it. Good boy, exclaimed Mom. Oh, Frankie, I'm so pleased. Go ahead, da. Nah, he snapped. You need to get the chocolate out first. Yes, yes, of course. As soon as Mum had turned round, Frankie picked up the grapefruit and hurled it out of the window. Whoosh! It flew right at the nuclear power station. The grapefruit must have hit something as light on the power station flickered for a moment. Mum then turned back with a square of chocolate in her hand. You finished it? Yeah, Ma, lied Frankie. The lady inspected his bowl. You ate the skin as well. Did I? Yes, it's very tough, the skin of a grapefruit. Yes, well, that's the best bit, Ma. Now give me that chocolate, now. I said give me that chocolate, now. The lady was about to hand her son a square of chocolate when he ate it out of her hand like a dog. Ow, screamed Mum, you bit my finger. It was in the way, Ma. Now what's next? Feeling she was on a roll after Frankie had eaten up his grapefruit, the skin and all, she tried the next fruit, a banana. It was the same routine. Frankie tricked his mum into thinking he'd eaten it in exchange for another square of chocolate. Again, the banana was flung out of the window. However, because it was bent, the banana returned to him like a boomerang, banging Frankie on the head. So he threw it again, underarm this time, and once again it hit the power station. The hum became a loud grinding noise. Mum turned back to see the pl plate was empty. Frankie, you ate the banana skin. Yeah, Ma, it was yummy tastic. Chocolate now. Yes, yes, of course. This time the lady wasn't taking any chances with her fingers. She had become attached to them, so she threw the square of chocolate up into the air for her son to catch in his mouth, the way one might fit, throw a fish to a killer whale. Having had incredible success with the grapefruit and banana lady thought it, it's time to become more adventurous. So this morning's breakfast was to be rounded off with an exotic fruit, a pineapple. Once again, Frankie managed to convince his mum that he'd eaten it whole when he had lobbed it out of the window. Once again, it reached the power station, causing some sort kind of siren to go off in there. What a super breakfast, Frankie said mum brightly. We're on a roll now. A little later that day, it was time for lunch. Frankie's mum felt she should try her son and some vegetables. A cauliflower was the first one to be flung out of, of the window as soon as Mum's back was turned. He threw it like one might for a sh shot put. The boy was given another square of chocolate. Next, the pasture of peas was flicked one by one off the boy's plate. Ping, ping, ping! They all flew out of the window straight towards the power station. This was fun! A new word was more chocolate! Pudding was a pear. The weird mishap an easily bruised apple type thing was of course flung out of the window and it disappeared somewhere inside the power station. Mum was worried that because her son was being so good at eating all his fruits and vegetables she was going to run out of the chocolate. The giant bar was very nearly gone. Dinner was a cabbage. This is a vegetable even people who like vegetables don't like. Even other vegetables from the cabbage I won't be friends with it. Cabbage is a vegetable that gives other vegetables a bad name. Yet as soon as his mum's back was turned off to break off another square of chocolate, Frankie appeared to gobble up the whole cabbage in one go. Really it had... It really, it too had been launched out of the window, once again landing somewhere in the power station, which was now giving off red hot heat. By the time Mum was beginning to become suspicious, I ha hadn't even cut that. I haven't even cut that 
cupboard shirts, she exclaimed. I like it raw, ma. More nutrient, nutrient, nutrient. The boy was searching for the word nutritious, but couldn't find it anywhere in his brain. So I set off for something simpler. More things in it, in it. Mum wasn't exactly sure what her son meant, but nodded anyway. Yes, good boy. Chocolate, yes, of course, coming right up. For pudding, Mum had planned to feed her son his most dreaded food. Rhubarb. Now, Frankie, let's see what a good boy you really can be. If you eat your rhubarb, you can have two squares of chocolate. In fact, you can finish off the whole bar. As she turned round to pick up the bar, Mum noticed the window was wide open. That power station is very hot today, she said to herself before shutting the window. A piece of rhubarb flew past her head at speed. Whoosh! It bounced off the pane of glass. Bong! It unstuck the lady on her face. Splat! Thank you! What on earth do you think you are doing? demanded Mum. She was furious at having been fooled like this. I think that rhubarb thingy is still alive. As soon as I bit into it, it ran off. Did it indeed? Yeah, ran across the table and did this big leap thing off it to the window. Mum stared at the boy. She was fuming. Frankie knew the game was up. He hadn't seen that look since he'd swapped the family dog for a bag of fudge. You haven't eaten a single fruit or vegetable I have served up all day, have you? Frankie was silent for a moment. Yeah, I have, Ma. Really? Yeah, I took a nibble out of one. Which one? A pea. You ain't one pea? Nah, I ate about half of one. It was ranky rank it was ranky danky doo da. Totally disgustable. Repulsive. Never again. Right, Ma, give me the rest of that ch chucky bar. Now, there will be no chocolate for you, young man, cried Mum. Being called young man meant he was in serious trouble. But, you, now you go, but you, now you get off to bed at once. But Ma, bed! Frankie shrugged and sloped off upstairs to his bedroom. He muttered something about not caring, but he did really. Nobody wanted to go to bed at six o'clock. Even babies were allowed to stay up later than that. Frankie arrived himself as he slumped down on his bed. He stared out of the window. It was still light. Something strange was going on at the nuclear power station. Red lights were flashing everywhere and workers were running around in what looked like a panic. Bed now, shouted Mum from the boys' bedroom door. As he slid under the covers, she drew the curtains. Tomorrow we're going to start all over again. What? Guess what's for breakfast? Dunno, something vomitious and all fru fruity vegetable I bet. You were dead right, young man. Rhubarb! Now the boy bawled, yes, rhubarb for breakfast. With that, Mum stormed, stormed out of the boy's bedroom, dramatically slamming the doors. She did so. Bang! The lady then had to sit down in a darkened room. She couldn't remember ever being so angry. That night, Frankie found it hard to sleep. The thought of having to eat rhubarb for breakfast made his stomach turn. He tossed and turned for hours before finally drifting off. Zzz, zzz. The sound of someone or something tapping on the window woke him. Tap, tap! Frankie opened... Frankie's eyes opened in terror. Was this one of those dreams where you dream you are awake? Tap, tap. There it was again. Tap, tap. Again. The boy was shaking with fear. Who or what was out there? His bedroom was on the top floor of the house. It was too high for, any, for, up for anyone to reach. Tap, tap. There was only one thing for it. Frankie would have to peek out of the window. He slid out of bed as quietly as he could and pulled the curtain back the tiniest bit. Ah, oh, screamed the boy. Outside was some kind of monster. It looked like a cabbage, but was about a thousand times the size, the size of was growing a luminous green colour. It, it, it tapped on the, 
window with its sleepy hand. Tap, tap, as if it wasn't going away, Frankie slowly opened the curtains. What was this creature? A giant alien planet from outer space? Frankie, it boomed. The thing knew his name. Yeah, 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 he stammered. Frankie the fussiest child in the world? I guess so. Who are you? I'm the cabbage you so cruelly flew out of the window. Yes, we fruits and vegetables do have feelings, you know. Why are you all big and talking? You threw me so high I went down the chimney of the power station and then and ended up in the nuclear reactor. What? The boy couldn't believe his ears. Behind the giant cabbage, Frankie could see that smoke was blown from the power station. It was cl clear the place was going into meltdown. Now it's time to get my revenge. If you won't eat me, I will eat you. With that, the cabbage just leave your hand, smashed through the window and grabbed the boy by the arm. Ow, he screamed. Frankie rus rustled through and uh, rushed out of his bedroom. He raced down the stairs and out into the street. He ran as fast as his legs could carry him. Soon he was out of breath and had a stitch. A diet of cake, crisps, biscuits and chocolate had left the boy in fits. Limping down the road, Frankie didn't dare look back. Behind him he could hear a thundering sound. After a few more steps, the boy couldn't help himself. He just had to look back. At the front was a giant glowing cabbage. Get him, it boomed as it bounced along. Behind the cabbage was a huge glowing white and green thing. It was hopping down the road. Nasty little runt, it shouted. Let's digest him slowly. Make him suffer. Next to the humongous cauliflower were thousands of, boun of bouncing green spears. They're about the size of beach balls. Frankie le realised he must be the peas that he had flicked out of the window. The peas seemed to be crying. I can't believe he did this to us, one said, fighting back the tears. Everyone likes peas. I don't. Peas are pewter and just it, shouted Frankie. Let's teach him a lesson, cried another pea. Yes, shouted a chorus of them. The fruits were not to be outdone by the vegetables. A giant grapefruit, a ginormous banana, a colossal pear and an enormous pineapple were all falling close behind. Keep up, said the grapefruit. I am keeping up, dear, hissed the pear. You know I bruise easily. Me too, chimed in the banana. The pineapple was pushing past them all to get to the boy. Out of the way, come on us, exotic fruit coming through. It blowed in a posh voice. Frankie was frozen in pit fear. The fruits and vegetables surrounded him, all ready to pounce. Please, please, I beg you, don't eat me. I promise I'll eat me five a day. Just then a voice came from far off. It was a ginormous rhubarb. The boy is mine, boomed the rhubarb from the roof of the house. The vegetable was lit from behind by a silvery moon. What? demanded the cabbage. Frankie looked at the tall pink vegetable thing. I didn't see you manage to fling you out of the window. You bounced off the glass and hit me in the fa me mat in the face. I know, replied the rhubarb. That is a crime not just against me, but it's against rhubarbs of the world. I had to avenge them. So I crawled across the kitchen floor, leaped through the cat flap, and jumped over the fence to get inside the power station. From there, I found my way into the nuclear reactor. Bingo! A nuclear rhubarb, your worst nightmare! With that, the monstrous vegetable leaped off the roof of the house. It flew through the air, opening its mouth wide, revealing its terrifying rhubarb tea. Ah, oh, screamed the boys, his head was munched off. All the fruits and vegetables pounced. I want an arm, shouted the cabbage. I want a leg, exclaimed the cauliflower. Save us the rest, said the fruits. It was a feeding frenzy. The boy was gone in seconds. The peas bounced up and gobbled down what was left of him. This was the end of Fussy Frankie. 
So children, please remember this important lesson. Eat your greens, or one day they might eat you. The end. And that is the story of Fussy Frankie.